good morning, everyone. I'm Valentin Bartinov. I'm a developer at Nginx company. Uh, sorry, I'm nervous because this is my first ever speech in public in English. And, <laughs> and, uh, and I'm very excited to see you all here on the first Nginx conference. And uh, it's uh, really, really very motivating for us all. Thank you for coming. Uh, today I'm going to talk about some practical aspects of Speedy and uh, I'll try to answer the question should you enable Speedy to your site or not. So uh, let's start with uh, some brief introduction of Speedy and Nginx. Uh, I started developing Speedy in March of 2012, uh, 2012 and uh, it was the work that was sponsored by Automatic, so and it was a really painful development process because uh, Nginx actually very highly optimized for uh, processing uh, requests uh, per separate con connection, so it's very painful and uh, long-term development, but uh, the first public version was uh, released in 15 of June 2012, and uh, it it was uh, almost a year later when we merged this code into Nginx mainline version. So, and uh, thanks to Automatic and MaxCDN, we updated uh, uh, speed implementation to the latest uh, draft in, in the beginning of this year. So, uh, and uh, Currently, today, oh, we are the main web server that uh, used on the sites that uh, search, search speedy, so uh, we are proud of it. And uh, it's really easy to enable speedy in Nginx. All you have for it, uh, it's, uh, if you, all you have done is it's just uh, uh, to have Nginx uh, with, built with speedy model and Open SL version 1.01. Uh, uh, so uh, then you just configure as a normal HTTPS uh, configuration, but uh, just uh, add the option speedy to the listen directive. Uh, there are also one option that you may enable. It's about uh, header compressions from. Uh, for responses, we have it disabled by default because uh, uh, if you enabled it, it can it can make your server vulnerable to the crime attack. But if you're sure that you have no, uh, if you're sure that you have no sensitive data in your response headers, or if if you're sure that you um, if you're sure that the client can, can uh, cannot somehow control response headers, then you may enable it without any problems. And uh, also, I recommend to stick with the uh, mainland branch if you want to enable speed because it receives uh, most of the updates and bug fixes. So it's just, uh, especially for speedy case, it's just more stable than stable. Yeah. And uh, uh, what about Speedy? Uh, you may think that the benefits of Speedy is because of uh, header compression. Well, uh, sometimes, yes, but uh, actually you need really big headers, about a few kilobytes. I don't think it's very common to have cookies a few kilobytes. So, and uh, usually headers are really small and compression uh, will not add the will not add uh, any visible benefits in performance. So some, somebody may think that Speedy uh, really fast because it's binary. Well, uh, it's not actually the case because uh, even in Speedy you have to parse all headers in uh, decompressed uh, headers block uh, byte by byte, so it's like an HTTP. Uh, the main benefit from speed is from multiplexing. So uh, it just uh, separates 
if you request in two chunks, and each chunk of request has its own header that specify for which, uh, for which request this data intended for. So it's like um, HTTP chunk encoding, but HTTP chunks only have size in headers. Speedy chunks has size and requests IDs. Uh, so, and I try to combine all benefits of speedy and Actually, there are benefits and advantages and disadvantages because sometimes uh, playing HTTP and HTTPS are really faster than Speedy. And uh, if you look at the table, uh, you can easily find a few cases. For example, uh, if you just stream one big, uh, one big file or you are streaming video or, or something uh, that you and you need only one connection, you will not benefit from speedy. Uh, and uh, there is almost no difference in just transferring bit chunks of data over speedy or over plain HTTPS. And even more, speedy will add some over overhead to transferring data. So there is no ma magic in uh, uh, speedy performance. Uh, then, then more, Actually, the more parallel requests you have, the more you will benefit from speed. But uh, there are also cases when you will not see almost, uh, you will not see any benefit because uh, speed works uh, in one connection that, uh, of course, that uh, can be established to only one host if it's, uh, if you if you spread your data over a number of hosts over a number of servers that has different IPs, then you you can't use one connection. You need a, a one connection per server. And uh, our browsers usually opens a number of connections, a number of HTTP connection to one server, so they can always. Uh, uh, they can always request multiple mu multiple requ resources over these connections, and uh, you will you will re really eliminate some uh, additional handshakes and additional latencies if you uh, if you, you have more resources than browsers usually open connections, and also you will see uh, that I put RTT time as a multiplier to latency. So if your RTT time is really low, uh, all three of, of, of your three rows of the table just zeros for all the cases. And uh, we, we, we actually start to investigate uh, this uh, when some big uh, company in Russia asks us to see what happens, they just enabled uh, speedy on their servers and almost see zero uh, increase in page load times. So th they asked us to find out what happens. And we uh, built uh, a lab environment and tried to reproduce the problem, and actually we can't. Uh, but we, we start to looking more carefully and Found, find, find, eventually, we find out, find out that uh, found out that we mm, that they use sharding, they they use sharding over multiple IP addresses. So uh, browsers just uh, just opens multiple speedy connections, and uh, it's it was like HTTPS connections, and almost no benefit at all. Uh, just for this talk, I built uh, an. Uh, 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 I built. I, I make. I made a benchmark, uh, and I used our main main page of company website. So um, it's it's uh, it as you as you can see, it uh, has uh, a, a lot of numbers external resources. So some of them are actually. Uh, depending was depending on each other, and uh, it's, it's really very unoptimized, unoptimized page. I think uh, Speedy will uh, 
speedy will, will be good for this page. So, and then what, what, what I see that, so it, it's my test environment, but actually it uh, doesn't matter well, uh, because uh, absolute numbers doesn't matter. Uh, they all are relevant. Just look at the trends. You may use your website and see different numbers, but the trend will, should be the same. That what I see uh, when I benchmark this page. So as you can see on low latency networks, you, you will uh, not benefit from speed. You probably just even slow. You will see some slow down because uh, multiple connections also uh, have multiple uh, TCP windows and multiple socket buffers. So just uh, use more resources, and when RTT, RTT time really low, uh, uh, more more wi window sizes and more buffers, uh, just push this push this up. But when RTT times start to be significant, uh, speedy easily overcome HTTP and HTTPS. So, but then I start to. Uh, shard this page, I shard it, it uh, across five different hosts, and that's what, what I see. Uh, so, uh, when, when you shard uh, speedy across different hosts, browser is able to open only one connection to each host, and uh, while it usually opens about six connections to every host with uh, HTTP and HTTPS. And uh, it, it's, 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 it's uh, how you can uh, slow down your site by enabling speedy. And then I try to some, to ma make some optimization for the, this page. I just put styles on the same server that served uh, the main page. So, and uh, as you can see, it results is uh, speedy starts to overcome HTTPS for uh, RTT 100 or above. Uh, actually, I did test for a much bigger RTT, but uh, I just uh, cut down these graphs because uh, it's almost the same above uh, the limit. So, and uh, please also note that I uh, used a logarithmic scale for a vertical axis because j j just to uh, just to better view of graph. But uh, if you just see it lines, you can uh, you can notice a real um, increase in page load time. It, it can be much bigger, and uh, it's it's just the same data, but especially for speedy, how it degrades when we try to shard it. So sharding and speedy is something that you can combine. And uh, it's the uh, best results that I can get from this page. So I used uh, optimal sharding for HTTP and HTTPS and speedy on a single host. Uh, as you can see, uh, for low latency uh, networks, it behaves pretty the same as HTTPS, uh, sharded over multiple Costs and about uh, over about 100 RTT, it starts to behave pretty much the same as uh, plain HTTP connections. So, uh, and my, my last part of the talk will be about uh, HTTP 2.0 because actually this this is our future and uh, it's almost the same as PD. Uh, it started from speedy specification, but uh, it's, it looks uh, like more just polished speedy version. It uh, adds more complicated uh, priority mechanism, and uh, it also adds more po more pain to implement it right. And uh, it uses uh, semantics of HTTP uh, one version, so you don't need to change anything in your backends or something. So. Uh, we, we can implement uh, HTTP 2 in Nginx just like a speedy, just like a new version of speedy. And 
Uh, it also uses custom heat compression, uh, so it's, it doesn't suffer from crime attack, so uh, like GZIP. Uh, and uh, it's also specified how it can be used over plain TCP uh, using upgrade header. It's the same way as WebSockets. Uh, but uh, you should know that uh, if, uh, if you have some proxies, and uh, this proxies ca can only understand uh, HTTP, uh, you can't cover uh, uh, HTTP2 or Speedy or plain TCP, and uh, probably this, this proxies, proxies cannot uh, pass this. It's the same problem as WebSockets. WebSockets sometimes doesn't work on plain TCP, and you need to cover it by TLS. Uh, so, uh, actually, I don't think that this is right, right, uh, uh, right evolution for HTTP protocol because uh, actually it adds a, a big learning violation to the protocol. Uh, why, why actually we need to uh, implement multiplexing into applications, into web servers and web browsers? Well, I think it should be in kernel. It's like SCTP or something. But that's what we have and <laughs> what we can do. So uh, I think that's all. Thank you. Okay. From what you said, you, you asked me, let me summarize what, what you said is um, really in terms of the performance is comparable to current optimized HTTP test. Yes, right. And more complexity. Yes, but actually you can, uh, you, it, uh, it compared to plain HTTP, but it uh, usually faster than HTTPS. And when you need to secure your connections, you will benefit from speed. But if you just use HTTP and uh, you really uh, sh can shard your resources across multiple servers, you don't need uh, speedy. But if you, if single host is only, is only what you can help and you don't want uh, sh sh implement sharding, you may just enable the speedy and you will benefit. Uh, it, it should be completely transparent to application. And uh, actually, you have a number of uh, uh, variables in Nginx, and you can log them and see when cli client uh, uses speedy or not. Uh, but it's just uh, for log purposes on, uh, or some statistics. Really, you, you don't need to change uh, your application. You may just uh, add option to listen directive, and uh, it will work. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, browser, if it doesn't support speedy, it will fall back to plain HTTPS. Uh, like uh, Internet Explorer, it's currently done, doesn't support uh, speedy version 3.1, which is implemented in Nginx currently. So it just, uh, just will use uh, HTTPS connection. Those 
will optimize them. Uh, I can suggest that the, there is also a way to combine uh, HTTP sharding with speedy. Uh, actually, you can uh, you j just need to set up uh, um, hosts over the same IP address and uh, have um, wildcard or multi-domain certificates. If browser sees this, that uh, host resolves to the same IP address and certificate is valid for this address, uh, for this host, uh, then it uh, uses the same speedy connection and it doesn't open another one. So you can uh, combine HTTP sharding and uh, speedy this way. And uh, what can I do is, is uh, you should always uh, benchmark your setups. So if you add, add speedy, you you need to somehow uh, measure what uh, benefit you have or, <laughs> or you haven't. It's always uh, just uh, don't uh, just don't blind enable something because uh, somebody just uh, you, sh you should always benchmark it. Uh, Currently, I, I don't know, probably we have some, but it's uh, not a question for me. I, I don't um, s schedule our development process. Is there any existing code? Uh, as I know, there's uh, no uh, roadmap for near future, and, but uh, probably we someday add them, and uh, especially if somebody will sponsor it. Any other question? And uh, by the way, if you're interested in how to benchmark your setups well, you can uh, just come to the session of my colleague, Konstantin. It will be uh, probably, uh, if I remember right, next day of the conference. So it's all about benchmarking and how to do it right. Thank you.